maybe their, their blood sugar in the morning is about a hundred. Would you be yeah. worried about that? Usually not. You know, I think this is a common thing that I see as well in my practice. And, and there are some things that you can do you know, playing around with kind of fat to protein ratios and, you know, fasting windows and stuff like that can help bring down the glucose. But generally, you know, if everything else looks good and, you know, usually with those people, again, I'm very liberal about using continuous glucose monitors. So, you know, if your blood sugar is kind of a flat, you know, hundred ish throughout the day, I don't think that's something we need to be too worried about, but, you know, I want to make sure that they're not, you know, again, check the LPIR score, and then we're going to follow that coronary artery calcium score over time. Even if you have a zero score, I still want to make sure that you're staying zero. And maybe in that situation, we may not check it every year. You know, maybe you go two or three years. A lot of it's going to depend on the age of the patient and, you know, again, what these other markers look like. Because even if you have a zero score, if, you know, you are insulin resistant. If your LPIR score is abnormal, you have other, you know, features of insulin resistance, then, you know, I am worried about that person. And the zero score still doesn't really reassure me because we can be fairly certain in that scenario, it's not going to stay zero. Yeah. So my general guidelines is, you know, men should probably get their first scan around the time that they're 40 and women probably around the time that you're 50. If you have, you know, reason to be concerned, you have a strong family history, if you know you're insulin resistant, if you've been a smoker, something like that, then get the scan earlier. It's really never too early to get the scan. It's just a matter of the zero score. You know, the younger you are, the less significant having a zero score ends up being. So, you know, yes, I've had some people that are in their 20s and 30s and were worried for some reason and we get a scan. Understand that as a heart surgeon, I now operate on 30 year olds like they end up on my table with advanced coronary disease. So it, it's certainly possible, you know, that you have heart disease in your 20s and 30s. And the earlier we find out about it, and this is the other part of this to understand, if you're young and you have a non-zero score, even if that score is very low, like five or 10, that's a major, major red flag. Because if you're 20 or 30 years old and you've already started forming plaque, we have a big problem that we need to get on top of before you you end up as one of those 30 or 40 year olds on my operating table. I mean, all, all of the above certainly contributes, but I think diet is still first and foremost. And these are people who, you know, likely have been insulin resistant from a very young age. And again, we're seeing this. We're seeing teenagers and even pre-teenagers diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, you know, not type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, which means that they've been insulin resistant from very early on. And we know, for instance, that, you know, if your mother is insulin resistant while you're in the womb, that's going to make you more prone to being insulin resistant. And, you know, some of these, you know, some of these children, unfortunately, that are born under those circumstances, and then they're really fed sugar from birth. And a lot of the things that kids get fed these days are just, you know, very high sugar and they get insulin resistant very young. And these, I think, are the 30-year-olds that are, you know, now ending up on my operating table. 